A beautiful day to you, our esteemed viewers from the Advent Cable Network, and welcome to another interesting episode of the program Disability Voice. My name is Favor Ajara. Disability Voice program is created basically to educate the government, the church, that persons with disability can be loved, can be enabled, can be educated and empowered because disability is not a stigma nor a disease. And also to advocate for the interests and the rights of persons with disability. Viewers, today we'll be looking at a topic, language development and disorder for children with special needs. And with me today to discuss this topic is Mrs. Bola Olise Ngozi Joy. Mrs. Ngozi Joy Bola Olise is the CEO of Safe Host International Initiative. Safe Host International Initiative is an inclusive school and also with, bad, uh, with body facilities for children with special needs. She is also a disability advocate. Ma, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so as we all know, our topic today is language development and disorder for children with special needs. Ma, please, can you tell us what is language, what is speech delay and disorder? and also differentiates between speech delay and disorder. Okay, thank you very much. That name is actually Bello Lisa. Okay, Bola sorry. Lisa. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Lisa. Okay. Your pardon. Yeah, okay, okay, when we talk about, uh, before we even talk about disorder and the delay, I think we should know something about speech. What is actually speech? What is language? Uh, speech is... Um, a means of communication, a means of you know interaction, a means of expressing our views, our wants, our desires, a means of uh, calling attention to ourselves. So that is speech. And then when we come to delay and disorder, well, we'll take it this way. Um, in speech, there are developmental milestones a child is expected to attain as uh, you know they are growing up and so in um, speech development for children zero to six months there are certain ways we expect them to communicate to us you know the social speech the konania speech something like uh, babbling saying you know incoherent things but then we we can always interpret it every mother does and then from six months to, you know, 18 months, two years, and the rest, the language becomes more sophisticated. It becomes more egocentric. The child is able to shout out to attract attention. And then by the time the child is two plus three, of course, we expect the speech to be clearer for the child to be able to express him or herself very well. So, when we come to delay and disorder, now when it comes to delay, the child may be able to be making little noise, little sound, as compared to his developmental age. That is, if it is not commensurate to the child's age, we'll say that the child is delayed in speech. That does, it, it doesn't mean that the child cannot uh, you know, express himself well. But then, for the people who are not familiar with the child, they, they may not be able to grasp fully what the child is saying. But when it comes to disorder, there's a clear cut um, problem that could be in terms of sounds of words or, you know, um, the, the pronunciation of words. Uh, um, you know, there's a, a slurring that is not really clear. And that is when we now say that there, there's a, a, a disorder. You know, I, th I hope I'm yes, able to yes, yes. say so. Thank you very much for that enlightenment. So I'll go further to ask. Now, how do you think that parents can understand when they have a child that is having speech delay or speech disorder? 
what do you think that parents can do to understand these two things? Because I've seen a situation whereby some, some children will have speech delay, they will feel they, are, they have speech disorder. Why some parents, they, some children will have speech disorder, the parents will feel it's actually a speech delay and not disorder. So how can parents differentiate these two things? And uh, what can parents do to understand whether the child is actually having a disorder or a delay? Okay. Um, first of all, first and foremost, parents should visit the health providers, the medical personnel, the pediatrician. Remember the age range from zero to six months. Of course, there are things we expect to hear from the child. If you're not hearing that from the child, the first part of course should be to the medical center to see a pediatrician who will ascertain certain things on assessment and examination of the child. The doctor has to examine the mouth and so on and so forth. I'm not a medical doctor, <laughs> okay? So the first part of call is the health center or the hospital to see the pediatrician. Then, after that, the therapists, there are speech pathologists who are specialists in speech language development. And where uh, it is difficult to find them, as a mother, as a parent, or a caregiver, there are certain things one can do to ascertain, at least if your child has a disorder or delay. For this other, that's where I come in as a therapist. You can start by trying to see if your child can blow. The simple act of blowing the wind, blowing a balloon, blowing powder. It could be just your powder. You try to get your child to blow out air, exhale air. That is one point. If a child cannot do that, a child that is between 18 months and two years and is having difficulty blowing out air, exhaling air, you know, making it to either blow balloon, blow the bubble, or you can just get a, a cotton wool and try to show the child what you want the child to do. We call it modeling. You bring a cotton wool, Keep it and then you start blowing. It could be a play. You're playing with a child. All right? Mm -hmm. So by the time you're blowing on it, the child who does not have language disorder will not be able to blow. But a child who has language delay, we just call them the slow, uh, late talkers, they'll be able to blow it. So if they're able to exhale air to the extent of moving something like cutting wool or blowing the balloon or blowing the bubble, then that child has language delay. Be patient with the child. Some children uh, may talk as late as eight years old. Really? Yes. yes. Mm. Even 14. I've seen, I've seen mm. a 12 year old just starting to talk, you know. So when you notice all that, you know, now, just through play method, you'll be able to ascertain. And if a child has the, just, is just a delayed uh, talker or has a, a, a disorder, you now know the next thing to do. Okay, okay, that's really interesting. You know, saying that a, a child can grow up to 10, 11, 12, and, and even and 17. Can, and can still have delay. Yes. Delay in speech. Yes. Wow. So do you think parents can really have such patient to monitor this thing at that time? You know, yeah. you know, most parents now you we, we know we know that most parents will want like within a year, two years. Three years. Three years. Children oh, should start talking yes. and but yes. if I try to get to five years, you are going to ten. You know, I, I don't know. Of course, of course, no parent will be happy with that. Most of the time, parents will just get fed up and embrace some prayer houses <laughs> and native doctors, and then they'll to see know, what to do. Yes. <laughs> to you make know, sure the child talk by talks, fire by force. By fire by force. <laughs> but then the right thing is to patiently wait for the child. Of course, after 
checking out the other things through assessment. Is the child does the child have developmental uh, delays? Does the child have any issue with the the hearing, the sight, the truth, the tongue? All this is a uh, examination which the health personnel will have to check and uh, speech pathologists. Once they are certain that all these things are intact, the next thing is to keep exposing the child to experiences, to places where they need to see things and imbibe knowledge, where they need to play around with others, see other children talking, and that is where inclusion comes in. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for enlightening us. Okay, please, can, now, can you quickly tell us now, can a child have multiple disorder, multiple language disorder? Yes. Either language or speech or disorder. Speech disorder. Yes. It's possible. It's possible because when we talk about the language disorder, we are talking about the grammatical aspects and, um, you know, omissions that uh, uh, appears in... The, the way the child talks. A child may be able to say something, but not very clear in the way he should say it or the way that it's acceptable. You know, for instance, uh, in the language, you may talk about a child having language delay. You'll be omitting some letters or some sounds when he's talking. But in language disorder, the, the sounds, the sounds are not clearly you know, there. So it is possible for a child to have that. Wow. And that is why in, um, we advise as educators not to bombard the child with so many language exposures, which may ultimately bring more confusion to the child. Okay, I think I'm learning something today too. <laughs> you know, we as parents, we want to we want our uh, children to learn multiple languages in school. Whereby you see the French, you see the our normal Nigerian languages in our in the their normal curriculum. So for a child to a child that has speech disorder, that means you are saying a child cannot learn multiple languages because of not really that they cannot learn multiple languages, but the nitty gritty of the language. Um, um, teachings may cause more, more confusion to the child. Let me uh, maybe more stress to the child who is already struggling to grasp what you are saying in maybe your native language, and then what you are saying in English, and then what you are if you are teaching Spanish or teaching French, and the, the confusion will be too overwhelming. For the child that's actually what i mean it's okay thank you very much ma, for enlightening us on that <coughs> viewers at home we go on a short break when we return we continue with the conversation don't go anywhere now streaming now analyzing now assessing now discussing now sharing your thoughts on everything and every issue that affects you acnn's now streaming discusses the issues trending and the matters that matter to us all Join us every Monday to Friday at 10 a.m. on ACNN as we go in-depth into every issue that impacts our lives, our communities, and our country. Welcome back, viewers. If you are just joining us, today we are looking at the topic language development and disorder for children with special needs. And still with me in the studio is Mrs. Ngozi Joy Bello Lisa. I hope I got the name right this very, time. Very well. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> so so uh, I still want you to enlighten us more on the issue of language, speech disorder, and uh, uh, speech development and disorder. Now, is there any treatment when a child has a disorder? Do you think there is any treatment? that a parent can seek a doctor for medical treatment or whatsoever? Um, when, when it comes to, welcome back our viewers, when it comes to disorder, yes, of course, there are treatments 
there are things the speech pathologists or the speech therapists will do when you meet a good one. There are so many things available, interventions available for the young child who has speech disorder. There are so many of them. Okay. Okay. So that means we can seek help from the medical yes. centers. No, okay. not the, first of all is to go to the medical personnel, your pediatrician. They will have to check for so many vital things. For instance, they'll check the tongue, the palate, they'll check the, the, the throat. There are so many things they'll rule out um, if the child has uh, developmental issues, neurological disturbances, and the rest. They will have to check whether the child has uh, autism and, and the rest. So those are the things the medical doc personnel will do. And then when it is ascertained that uh, there's a um, disorder, speech disorder, the speech pathologist has a lot of intervention. There are packages that can help. And with these interventions, the child is likely going to talk well. Okay, so uh, following, following up the same question, do you think uh, speech disorder is hereditary? Um, most of the time, it could be, but then um, some of these... Um, some of the disorders we notice, we see around us, most of them are hereditary. But then the speech disorder may not likely be, assuming it, is, um, it can be handled by the medical personnel. Assuming a child, the tongue was not well handled at birth, that could cause speech disorder. So if it is corrected, some of the treatment could be by surgery. Okay. If it is handled well, then that uh, is not hereditary. But some of them, um, like uh, stuttering, you know, people call it stammering, some of them could be hereditary. Okay, thank you very much for that wonderful enlightenment. So now, what advice will you give to parents who have children with special needs, children with speech delay, that find it difficult to seek for help. They don't have the knowledge, they don't know how to go about it, but due to discrimination in the society, they refuse to seek for help. What advice will you give to such parents? Okay, um, I don't think any parent will refuse to seek for advice. Maybe probably they don't have uh, the knowledge of where to seek for advice. And um, what causes this um, um, lack of, um, a, or will I call it enthusiasm to look out for help, could be lack of funds. It could be the stigma around the environment. It could be education. Maybe the parents are not exposed. But then, if, if the parents are learned or exposed, they should be able to, through media, the social media. There are so many advocate uh, um, organizations, advocacy coming up through the social media, through radio and the rest, and the, the television, and um, even the hospitals. There are, there are moves, I know of uh, about two or three hospitals where they give uh, new mothers new parents advice on what to do in case they notice so 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 thing in the life of their children so asking questions will help parents to come out asking questions and then define that um that stigma in the society what will people say will they say oh um my child is um has her tongue or his tongue tied in the water or the child is from the rivers and you know, defying all that will help a parent to seek for help. First of all, your medical center do not da look down on your medical personnel, the pediatricians, and through asking them questions, they will be able to direct you on where to look for speech pathologies, whether to be patient with the child if the child is just a late bloomer late talker or whether to seek intervention immediately 
Ask questions. Defy your environment, what the society is saying about disability. Just defy it and be your child's advocate. Be the mouthpiece of your child. That's my advice. Okay, thank you very much for that. So now, looking at uh, some parents who want to like, ah, my child has a speech disorder. Can this be handled spiritually? Is it possible? Let's take the child for a deliverance. Okay. So that at least it's, it's the child can start talking. Yeah. You know, you know, some parents they will tell you this is a uh, village people has, vis has visited me in the city. What is happening? That I'm having a child that has a speech disorder. Maybe when they find that and this. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you have to say about that when it has to do with? the religious setting and a child that has speech disorder? Well, I, I am a strong uh, believer in the power and the, 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 the power of God to heal and to cure. But I also know that the, the Bible talks, uh, okay, our religious book talks about walking and praying, walking and praying. As you're walking towards helping your child to talk, you are also praying. What I maybe you mean is not walking and just praying. Pray. And that is not what uh, uh, we are taught in our churches. It's not what we are taught. We are taught to watch and pray. pray yes. Watch and pray. Yeah. As you are praying, by all means, look for help. Be watchful. Look at the things that can help your child to begin to talk the way you want him or her to talk. Look for intervention. Ask questions. Go the extra man and the prayer will work. Yes, prayer is the key. And even if you are praying, faith with that work also is dead. I remember that very well. Thank you very much for educating us on that. So my last question to you, ma'am. Please, what advice will you give to the society towards discriminating against children with special needs in general? For us as a society, I think we have come a long way. And um, in the 21st century, I think we should be able to stand up for every child. Whether the child is challenged or not challenged, we should be able to speak up for the child. We should be able to embrace inclusion, especially at government um, um, uh, institutions, private institutions, we should embrace inclusion. We should not segregate against our children. What do I mean by that? If a child has delayed speech or has speech disorder, there's another means of communication, which is the sign language. So why won't schools introduce sign languages in their school? The society has come a long way. Families where they have the children, they should, parents, siblings, should come together and learn sign language so they can communicate with their children. The government as a whole should enforce the introduction of sign language in schools. They should introduce, the, 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 they should introduce the advocacy in schools so that children will know, other children, the typical children will know that, that they are typical children, they are human beings. And when given the right exposure and the chance, they will excel. And so my advice is advocacy, advocacy, more advocacy and inclusion. Thank, thank you. you very much for that wonderful conclusion. Well, thank you for coming in today's uh, uh, program. We really appreciate you for coming and we hope to have you in some other episodes. Thank you very much, Ma, for coming. I'll be glad to come. You're Thank welcome, you. Ma. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Viewers, this is where we draw the cutting of today's episode. But remember that disability is everyone's business. And before we go, also remember that inclusion is our watchword. Until we come your way again, same time, same session, Stay blessed and be inclusive in your environment. Thank you.
I remain favor, Ajara. Bye for now. Thank you.